Good morning. My name is Dr. Chet Rehal. I'm the chair of the Division of Cardiovascular Diseases at Mayo Clinic Rochester. Today I have two special guests with me, Dr. Verg Matthew, who's an interventional cardiologist and co-director of the catheterization laboratory for clinical practice and operations. Along with him is Dr. Kenneth Federley, who is a PhD radiation physicist focused on X-ray systems and radiation safety in our cath lab. They're here today to discuss a new and I believe very important paper that has been published in the latest journal of the uh, Journal of American College of Cardiology Interventions. And this deals with a program that the cath lab initiated a couple of years ago to improve radiation administration practices and radiation safety. So Virg, Ken, welcome. Good morning, Chet. Good to be here. Virg, could you give us a little bit of background from the clinical practice standpoint about how our cath lab actually used its x-ray equipment and why uh, we felt that there was room for improvement in our radiation safety practices. Certainly. Of course, radiation administration is a necessary component of our practice every day, day in and day out. And some awareness, if you will, or philosophy that radiation is, has some negative consequences, that awareness is important in terms of reducing radiation exposure. Now, as we, as we think about things, the average patient for a single procedure probably gets a dose much lower than the risk associated with cancer. But the assumption that some low risk, particularly when administered chronically or repeatedly, may have some elevation of risk is what drives our efforts to reduce uh, radiation dose administration, of course. And Virg, certainly as our procedures have become more complex and longer, there was a period when some of us were getting reported to the Radiation Safety Committee for exceeding institutional dose limits. Could you address uh, how the practice is changing? Exactly. The case complexity certainly changed. The coronary cases become more complex and the, and the case mix, of course, is vastly different in terms of prolonged structural cases, TAVR cases, things that were perhaps less protected as operators as well. So although the principal driver for this was reducing radiation exposure to patients, the corollary benefit, of course, is likely going to be radiation exposure reduction to operators as well. Have you seen any negative consequences to patients like skin burns or other things uh, over the years in practice? We've seen those things in the past, infrequently in our practice, but one would imagine that if we're not uh, careful about this, particularly as these more complex cases become more frequent, that doses may get out of hand if we're not particularly cognizant of the issue. Kent, when you surveyed the current state of radiation safety practices and knowledge amongst our faculty and trainees, what did you find? Well, there's a broad range of, if you will, um, knowledge and understanding of radiation. Uh, some folks are very in tune and very well versed in it, some folks less so. And so as part of this initiative, we're trying to elevate the uh, collective knowledge of the entire practice in radiation safety and safe radiation practices. Now, there was a number of simple but very important uh, things that were initiated in the cath lab. Could you describe briefly what those were? In general, radiation administration and trying to reduce radiation dose requires reduction of the radiation output of the X-ray system. So we want to reduce the output of the system, say, from a technical perspective. But also then we need to educate and teach clinicians how to use that radiation most effectively. And so uh, the clinical aspect, that is, how the physician uh, uses the radiation is very, very important. Now, there's several details under both the technical aspects and the clinical aspects. Um, some of them are to reduce frame rate, for example, is very important to make sure that the fluoroscopy radiation dose rate is overall low. Make sure we use the lowest settings to start a case. We have other settings which are somewhat higher dose rate if we need to for additional image quality as the case may get more difficult. But those are just a couple examples of things that, that we can do and have done to try to overall reduce the radiation dose. So as I recall, the current pulse rate for fluoroscopy is 7.5 frames per second, which, is, right. which is a quarter of what it used to be just a few years ago and all the systems are set on low res. Virg, how has this been accepted by the interventional cardiologists? I mean, clearly the images aren't as sharp and crystal clear as they were 10 years ago. I mean, what, uh, how have you accepted this? I think that's a critical component that you brought up in terms of how an operator is gonna view this day to day in a procedure. One has to accept that radiation dose reduction is going to impact image quality to some extent. And rather than expecting excellent images like we used to see with higher dose levels, continual fluoro and higher frame rates, we're going to have to look at them as diagnostically adequate or satisfactory imaging. Uh, 
And of course, that, that's, a, that's a learned behavior to a certain extent after you practice a certain way for a certain period of time. But quite frankly, after some period of time, I think most, if not all, of our operators are relatively content with the image quality that we, that we get. And the other important thing is that kind of set up our table so that we have immediate table side controls to change frame rate or boost dose for those individual shots or individual patients where the nominal settings uh, are inadequate for, uh, for good uh, image quality. I think that's a really important point. So the operator, their discretion can increase uh, dose and pulse rate as necessary for adequate uh, completion of the procedure. Exactly. So Ken, what kind of results were achieved uh, after a couple of years of, uh, of this initiative? So, yeah, so really we looked at a three-year period. We kind of started a very aggressive, I guess, initiative to reduce dose in, in mid-2008. And by mid-2010, we had reduced overall to all of our patients that, that come through the lab, we've reduced radiation dose by about 40%. Now, various specialty procedures may have received, uh, may have experienced a little bit more or less radiation dose reduction, but overall it's been a 40% change over about three years. And I'll take this opportunity to note that when we look back um, historically, we've reduced radiation dose in our lab by about 70% compared to 1997. And so a combination of Technology and clinical practice changes really has done a dramatic job of, of changing patient radiation dose in the lab now in the last, say, 15 years. Well, I think those are very impressive results and important for patient and operator and staff safety. Uh, Virg, one of the other things that uh, the lab has done is to report administered dose in its clinical report right alongside the contrast uh, uh, amount administered. Do, do you think this should be a new standard for all invasive laboratories. Well, we think radiation dose obviously is a critical component of, of the procedure and, and reporting that and recording that is important. The reason we record, record that is we, we're also concerned about cumulative exposure. Many patients return to the lab over the course of months or years for additional procedures and particularly in the short term knowing what their dose exposure is, for example, in an arbitrary period of one year may be important and that may be a standard that we may wish to strive for. Now we need to coordinate that obviously with other aspects of the practice that administer radiation. For example, radiology is, a, is an important player. So assessing a patient's cumulative dose is not just going to be a cardiac catheterization laboratory responsibility, but perhaps an institutional responsibility. Can you also have set up an examination for our trainees that they're required to pass before they can use our x-ray systems? Yes. Do, um, do you do that for the faculty, and, and should we do that for the faculty? Uh, to your point, no, we have not uh, tested the faculty. I think it would be a great thing to do. I think it would be a wonderful exercise and really kind of see how skilled everybody is individually. So, yeah, I think that would be fun to do. My, my guests today have been Dr. Virg Matthew, interventional cardiologist and co-director of the Mayo Clinic Catheterization Laboratory, along with Dr. Kenneth Federley, radiation physicist and responsible for our x-ray systems. They have presented uh, uh, results of a paper that has just been published this week demonstrating a 40% reduction in uh, radiation dose administered to our patients over a two-year period, utilizing some very simple but practical and effective uh, methodologies, including pulse rate uh, reduction, low resolution image settings, and uh, setting up a culture focused on radiation safety that includes a public reporting of um, uh, dose administered. We hope that you find this paper inter interesting and potentially applicable to your own practice. So thank you for joining me today.